Hi there and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna upcycle something you can find at almost any thrift store, rolling pins. And we're gonna upcycle them into some fun home decor. I'm gonna use three different methods. One rolling pin, I'm gonna use transfers. On another rolling pin, I'm gonna use stamps. And on the third one, I'm gonna use molds. And I'm also using fusion paint. It's a mineral paint and it has its own built-in sealer. So let's get started. I get my fusion paint from a new store in Tempe, Arizona called Bella Dolce Vintage. I'll put a link down below to her website. The first rolling pin I painted in the color Bayberry and I only had to do one coat. The second rolling pin I painted in the color Putty. And again, it only took one coat. And the third rolling pin I painted in the color Midnight Blue. This one got a little tricky because of those handles, but it all worked out. At Bella Dolce Vintage, Louisa, the owner, carries the full line of fusion paint, JRV stencils, there's decoupage paper, transfers, and a whole lot more. You'll have to check it out. For my first rolling pin, I used the IOD stamp, Rose Toile. The first time you use your stamp, you need to condition the stamp with some 180 grit sandpaper and lightly sand over the top of the stamp. This helps the ink and paint stick to the stamps. I'm also using the IOD ink in black and I haven't used my ink pad in a little while so I just freshened it up with some new ink. And here's where I encountered my first problem. I thought I could take the rolling pin and just roll it over the stamp, but I don't think I should have gone back and forth. I don't know what I was thinking. That did not work. So here my rolling pin has been repainted and I decided to start with the flowers. I use the heat gun just to help dry the ink faster because if there's a way I can mess it up, I will. And I wanted that ink dry. As you can see, I have not completely given up on the idea of being able to roll this rolling pin over the stamp, but I did it one time and it worked. Then I took some sandpaper just to distress it a little. And I went over everything with Annie Sloan Dark Wax. Because Fusion Paint has a built-in sealer, some places that I thought the wax was a little too dark, I was able to just take some clear wax and go over it and lighten it back up. And to finish this first rolling pin, I sanded the handles a little bit and then I took some hemp oil and went over the handles. I also used the hemp oil on the ends of the rolling pin because the wood looks so dried out. And to clean my stamps, I just use baby wipes. For my next rolling pin, I used the IOD Transfer Floral Anthology. I love using transfers. They add such a unique design to anything you do, and they're so easy to use. Sometimes picking out the flowers you're gonna use is the hardest part. There's so many choices. Because Fusion Paint has a built-in sealer, I can apply the transfer right over the paint after the paint's dried. If I was using a chalk paint, I would need to apply a top coat or sealer, let it dry, and then I could apply the transfer. Here I'm showing you how the carrier sheet looks as the 
transfer is applied. That plastic tool that I'm using to apply the transfer, that comes in every package. And you just wanna put down your transfer. Uh, a lot of times I'll tape them down if I'm working on something big, but this was okay even though it was curved. And firmly rub on the transfer to adhere the image to the project you're working on. I went back and forth using the tool flat like you're supposed to and rubbing that way, but then I think I found it easier to use it sideways and just use the narrow edge and I could, was able to apply it easier. I wasn't slipping off the rolling pin so many times. Now I'm taking the carrier sheet and I'm rubbing over the transfer. This is called burnishing and I'm just making sure that the transfer is adhered well. I don't show it here, but I finished this rolling pin just like the first one where I used hemp oil on the handles. While I was editing this video, I realized I forgot to put on the top coat and you need to do that after you use transfers. So I will be going back and putting on DIY Big Top. And for my last rolling pin, I used the IOD molds He Loves Me and Heirloom Roses. When using a mold, the first thing you want to do is use a little cornstarch, empty out the excess, and that helps release the clay from the mold. I'm using IOD air dry clay. You just want to pinch off the amount you need, knead it a little in your fingers, and then it easily goes into the mold. Then you wanna take your thumb, well, this is what I do. I take my thumb, I rub it across the top of the mold and get all the excess off, and then I just take it right, and then it comes right out of the mold. I tried using the plastic tool that came with the transfers to smooth over the top of the mold, but I, I had better luck using my thumb. Even though this was just a rolling pin, I still needed quite a few flowers. So I just did a bunch of flowers from both molds so that when I went to glue them on, I would have a variety to choose from. And that was definitely not enough flowers. I had to make more. And I used Titebon Original Wood Glue to apply my flowers. I would get a few flowers glued on and then I would use painter's tape to keep them in place till the glue dried. We went down for the grand opening and oh man, did I buy so many cute things. And then I let it dry overnight. In the morning, I did go back and add a few flowers. Once those flowers were dry, then I painted everything. After I got it mostly painted, then I took a chip brush and went back and pounced in all those little crevices to try to get the paint in there. Then I had to go back and pick out all the little bristles that that chip brush had lost. So my recommendation would be to skip the chip brush and use a good stencil brush. I used my JRV stencil brush and that worked great. Once the paint was dry, then I went over everything with DIY white wax. I used a stencil brush that I don't really like for stenciling to apply the white wax, but you can also use a soft cloth. Lou 
Teresa also offers classes and she has a great classroom area. You want to allow the wax to dry overnight and then you're going to buff it with a soft cloth. With these flowers so close together, it wasn't the easiest process buffing this wax. And this is what it's going to look like after you've buffed it. I wanted a little more contrast in the color. I wanted more of the blue to show through, so I took clear wax, applied it in certain areas, and then I buffed it a little bit more. I also switched to an old washcloth because I wanted a little more of the white wax off and I got it just the way I wanted it. And here are my finished rolling pins. Do you love rolling pins? I don't know why I love rolling pins so much. I'm not really a baker. Maybe it's just the memories I have with my grandmothers. They were both bakers. Do you have any memories like that? Let me know in the comments below. Are you gonna try to do this to any rolling pins? I'd like to know that too. And I hope I haven't made you dizzy. I'm still learning how to use this gimbal. Thanks for watching.